As the new league year officially kicked off today and moves continue to happen, the Chiefs seem to be biding their time for a wide receiver as they loaded up on a ton of cap space by restructuring Mahomes' contract. Well, they're gonna need to get it in gear because while a couple of intriguing receiving options became available today, a key free agent just got signed to a huge deal by the Titans, which means the rest of the top free agent receivers are bound to go sooner rather than later. So we gotta talk about it, but first, how about those? First up, last night it got announced that linebacker Willie Gay Jr. is indeed moving on from the Chiefs, though I think he would have loved to stay here personally. But he's signing a one-year deal worth up to $5 million with the Saints. That means he's joining former Chief teammates in Tyron Matthew and Colin Saunders as the Saints continue collecting players from the Chiefs defense. And I know what you're thinking, one year worth up to $5 million? The Chiefs couldn't figure out how to keep Willie Gay around for that little amount? Well, I think they could have, but you've got a lot of pressing needs in free agency all over the roster, and with linebacker Drew Tranquil signing that three-year $19 million deal, you just can't pay them all. Plus, they still have Nick Bolton and Leo Chanel on rookie deals, and I can definitely see Leo's playing time increasing as he heads into year three. Still though, I am bummed to see Willie move on and wish him the best with the Saints. And around 3 p.m. today, Willie Gay took to Twitter himself saying that he was blessed that Chiefs Kingdom took a chance on this country boy from Mississippi, noting a bunch of things. He was scared moving away from home, but wanted to give a shout out to the Hunt family, Brett Veach, Spags, and his favorite, Big Red. And uh, basically he enjoyed his journey over the last four years. And now his goal is to get his son to stop watching and singing the Red Kingdom videos. But speaking of linebackers, Drew Tranquil officially signed his three-year deal today with the Chiefs announcing it, including photos of him signing on the dotted line. A couple other Chiefs players signed today as well. Deion Bush officially signed, as did another one we'll talk about because in Drew Tranquil's presser with the media, he indicated to them that defensive tackle Mike Pinnell is also re-signing with the Chiefs. He saw him up there today as they all signed and he was absolutely correct. Pinnell signed his contract today also. The Chiefs announced it on social media and the 32-year-old run stuffer is back for another season with the Chiefs. He was in Kansas City in 2019 and 2020 before spending 2021 with the Falcons and 2022 with the Bears. KC then signed him to the practice squad late in 2023. I think it was in October and elevated him for three regular season games, as well as every single playoff game where he racked up 12 combined tackles, a tackle for loss, and made some definite key plays in the Chiefs Super Bowl run. So I'm glad this man is back because the Chiefs need depth across the D-line. Mike Dana, Derek Nottie, and Turk Wharton, I believe, are all still free agents as of when I'm recording this video. Next up, last night, so that would have been Tuesday, March 12th, it was announced that Patrick Mahomes is restructuring his contract to create an additional $21.6 million worth of salary cap space for the Chiefs as they aim to become the first NFL team to three-peat. So let's freaking go. Now, how they did this was by converting a portion of Mahomes' roster bonus in his contract into a signing bonus. He had a $34.9 million roster bonus and KC converted 27 million of it. And that's how 21.6 million of cap space was freed up. Uh, before this restructure, Mahomes' cap hit was gonna be $58 million, I believe it was, which was an ungodly amount, but is now 37 million, much better. But since KC was 5 million over the cap at the time this happened, that puts KC's cap space at around $15.3 million. So not only do they have room now to spend some money on maybe a wide receiver, probably coming soon, but they are also officially cap compliant. And every team in the NFL must be under that 255 million mark by the start of the new league year, which is today, March 13th at 4 p.m. Eastern. The Chiefs could also free up a ton more cap space if a trade for Legereus Sneed materializes. His current cap hit is 19.8 million, which the Chiefs are responsible for with him being tagged, uh, but if a trade does happen, that would free up the nearly $20 million and give Kansas City approximately $35 million in total cap space. Trade talks are still happening, from what I understand, with both the Titans and Colts interested, among other teams. Titans beat writer uh, Terry McCormick said Tennessee's interest is active, but no official offer has been made, from what he understands. They currently don't have a third-round pick and don't want to be without a second and a third in this year's draft. Meanwhile, Destin Adams, a Colts beat writer, said that teams are 
are indeed interested in trading for Snead, but are waiting on the Chiefs to make a decision on if they plan on trading the cornerback at all. And while that could be a bit of speculation about the Chiefs deciding to trade Snead at all or not, I would imagine they have a price in mind for Snead, probably wanting a second round pick for him and are standing firm on that. If they would have gotten an offer like that, Snead may have very well already been traded. However, if they don't get offered what they want, which is probably a second rounder, then the Chiefs could opt to keep Snead around because they know this man is more valuable than a third round pick, although time will surely tell when push comes to shove. If they do decide to keep Snead around though, the options from there would be to keep him on the tag with a $19.8 million cap hit for the season or try to work out a longer term deal via an extension. I would love to see a three year extension with an out after two, uh, but we will have to wait and see. That is for later down the road. Legereus Sneed though, made it clear he would like to stay yesterday when speaking at an event that awarded proceeds to Big Brothers Big Sisters Kansas City. That means you want to stay in Kansas City for quite a while. Yeah, I hope so, man. I want to though. Hopefully I'm still here. Hopefully we go back and repeat. It's very stressful right now too. I don't get sleep at night. I have a kid, a newborn. I got the free agency. And in the midst of all that craziness, his ideal scenario is still to stay with the Kansas City Chiefs. And with each passing day Snead isn't traded, you can slightly increase the chances that he ends up staying in KC, though as of right now, it's still pretty early and I think the trade is most likely gonna happen. Now, with the new league year officially here, that means the players KC did not sign prior are now unrestricted free agents and can now sign with any other team. And those players at the moment are as follows. Mike Dana, Derek Nottie, Turk Wharton, Mike Edwards, Darius Harris, Jody Fortson, Blake Bell, Blaine Gabbert, Richie James, McCole Hardman, Jarek McKinnon, CEH, Donovan Smith, and Prince Tego Winogho. I would personally love to see as many of these guys back as possible, but at the very least, Mike Dana, if they can afford him, Turk Wharton, Mike Edwards would be nice back there in the secondary, McCole Hardman at an affordable price and not the primary wide receiver signing, and Prince Tego Winogho for swing tackle depth. Others are also wanting to see some players come into the Kansas City fold as soon as humanly possible, with the main desire being a wide receiver, and I am in agreement. The question is, what receiver are the Chiefs gonna end up getting? Well, so far, Darnell Mooney signed a three-year deal with the Falcons, Gabe Davis and Devin Duvernay both signed with the Jags, Devontae Parker is with the Eagles, and a handful of others like Brandon Powell, Mac Hollins, Isaiah McKenzie, and Amir Smith-Marset have all signed with another team as well. That leaves KC with several options at the moment, like Curtis Samuel, Tyler Boyd, DJ Chark, Marquise Brown, KJ Osborne, among several others. And notice in that mix, I did not mention wide receiver Calvin Ridley. Well, that's because a bomb just recently dropped today announcing he's signing a four-year, $90 million deal, $50 million guaranteed with the Tennessee Titans. Very confusing, but it's a done deal. It's $23 million average per year and well over any amount the Chiefs would have been willing to spend on the 29-year-old receiver. If they could have got him for 17-ish, I bet you they would have been a little bit more intrigued, but 23 million a year, good God. I'm glad Casey is out on that, and that should now start the domino effect of other receivers coming off the board very, very soon. And with that news, many are really hoping for either Curtis Samuel or Marquise Brown, as both would be fun, speedy options to have at the disposal of Andy Reid's creativity and Patrick Mahomes. I talked about both of them in this video here in more detail if you wanna check that out, but honestly, Casey could potentially really be in on a couple of these guys. Marquise Brown or Curtis Samuel make a lot of sense in certain aspects at the right price. However, the thing is, the Chiefs are going to have to freaking open the wallet and spend some money eventually on the wide receiver room because it really, really, really could use the help. They have Rice, they have Kelsey, obviously, those are the two main receiving options, but outside of that, they got to bring in some help. Now, here's a bit of a twist for you. What about this? A couple divisional rivals released receivers today to save cap space and get cap compliant, and these guys are now available, with those two being 28-year-old Hunter Renfro, formerly of the Raiders, and 29-year-old Mike Williams, formerly of the Chargers. Renfro has had a couple of 600-plus yard seasons and even a 1,000-yard season in 2021. The former fifth-round pick out of Clemson is intriguing to me, but not that intriguing. Only on a very cheap deal and not as the primary move the Chiefs make in free agency. Mike Williams is more appealing in my opinion, but he's turning 30 this year and is coming off of an ACL tear last year. He's had a couple thousand yard seasons and several more over 650 yards, a couple bordering the thousand yard mark. And just last season, he accumulated 108 receiving yards on vertical routes before he tore his ACL week three and had uh, almost more yards receiving than MVS had all season long, I might add. So the Chiefs could probably use a guy like that. I mean, possibly, why the heck not at least 
kick the tires uh, with his agent. I mean, he's got some gas left in the tank, though I'm in line with Brett Coleman's thinking when he mentioned a cheap two year, let's see what you got deal that's heavy in incentives. Something like that, in my opinion, would make sense. Though I get why some would be put off by Mike Williams' recent injury history. Coming off of an ACL tear is no uh, minor injury. And I also understand his play style may not be a 100% match in what Kansas City is looking for. But I had to at least bring up both of these guys to get your thoughts since they just became available as of today. So would you take either Hunter Renfro or Mike Williams if the price was right? Or heck nah, stay far away from them. Let me know either way in the comments down below. And until next time, when hopefully I announce the Chiefs sign a wide receiver, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those?